Hi guys, it's Manas and I'm back with the part 5 of the Python tutorial series. So in this part, we'll continue where we left off, uh, left off, sorry. We were discussing for loops and in this part, we're going to start with while loops. So the for loop is actually the more complicated loop, so to say, because the while loop is very simple. While loop just takes a simple value, which is true or false. Capital T true or false. So if you say while true, it will continue to do whatever there is below this line. So you can imagine, right, while something is true, keep on doing this. If I run this, this is going to be an infinite loop. As you can see, it's going to run this forever and ever and ever. And if I don't stop, I'm going to run into a memory issue. So the while loop is very simple compared to the for loop. So the while loop star has this syntax where while uh, brackets and this value is a boolean value as you might have guessed if this is while false you will see that it doesn't print out anything okay so but you might be saying manas this is such a useless loop compared to the for loop because the for loop we could do useful things right like we could print out numbers from a defined range to a defined range and we could add increments in the way we liked and things like that but let me tell you that the while loop, we can do very similar things. We just need to add our own syntax. So the while loop has only one part. This is the part. This is the three parts of the for loop, whereas the while loop has only one part. And that part is the test condition, right? This test condition, as long as it is true, it will continue executing whatever there is to execute below it. So now let's try to convert a while loop to a for loop. Uh, now that might sound pretty interesting. So let's get started. So let's say I is 100. Okay, that's the initialization statement. Now while, now what do we put as a while? We just need a Boolean value here. We need not need an exact true written or a false written. We can say while I is less than 1000, right? This also evaluates your test condition which can return either a true value or a false value. And what do we do when we do this? We print out i, very simple. If we run this, we will see that it continuously prints out 100. This is not exactly what we want. We want it to print out 100, 101, 102. So what we'll do is we'll get i is equal to i plus one. Now this is going to increment i exactly like this third statement. And th we've actually defined this third statement right over here. When we do this, you can see that it just prints out values from 100 till 999. This is exactly the for loop which we discussed last class, uh, converted into a while loop. Now, now that we've understood what the while loop does, which is just like a sub part of a for loop, right? Let's try and write an interesting program. So I'll write the question here. Uh, I just came up with it right now. So we need to print out multiples oh no we need to print out all numbers from 100 to 1000 without the multiples okay not the word without without the multiples of 37 so if you look at the problem it tells us all numbers from 1 to 100 to 1000 uh, without the multiples of 37 so there's a special statement which we can use, which is called the continue statement. Now, first I'll write out some code and then let's see why that continue statement will help us. Okay. So if I modulus 37 is zero, or in other words, it is a multiple of 37, we will continue. Okay. Continue. If not, we will print out I and this part. I'm going to change its location to here. Okay. So now if I print, uh, if I run this program, sorry, you can see that it's gone ahead and printed out all these numbers except the multiples of 37. Now just to check, we can say 37 times 4 is 148, which we shouldn't be finding over here. And as you can see, it prints out 147, 148 is not printed out. Now what exactly did this continue statement do? this continue statement skips all the code below it so in our case all the code was just this one print statement 
if I had a lot more computation going on, say a is equal to 100, and every time we were doing after this print statement a equals a into a plus a uh, divided by 60. So if we were doing this computation, all this code would not be executed if this statement was true. It would continue, it would skip this code. The word is skip, continue or skip this code when this particular condition is true. Now you might have noticed that in the beginning, I put this i equals i plus one over here. If I put this over here, the issue is, let's try and run it. You can see that it prints out 100 till 110, but it doesn't print out 112, 113. Now why is that? Because if we look at 111 divided by 37, we can see that it gives us three. Or in other words, 111 is a multiple of 37. So what is happening? It's saying i is a multiple of 37. Yes, so it is skipping over all of this code. It is skipping over all of this code. We are not do even incrementing our i. So that's why I put this i on top over here. So this is simple way to basically print out all these numbers. Now there's multiple ways of do doing this. You could say I'll do this part i. If it uh, if it is not a multiple of 37, then I will print it. Print out i. That's that's another way of doing it. This will also do the same thing. And you can see that it gives the same output. If we scroll down, you will see that 148 does not exist. Okay, so this is how we can use a continue. But I wanted to introduce that uh, keyword called continue and explain its functions. So now that we've discussed the continue statement, let's also now what exactly is the break statement? Let's try to understand it with the help of an example. So let's say we are inputting an integer n from the user. enter n and we'll just convert that to an integer and let's use a for loop in this case for i in range n okay so we're gonna execute that many times i want to print out i in fact not just i i want to print out all the multiples of i i want to okay this is this is what we need to do we need to print out the multiples of 17 below uh, one uh, below 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 300 okay so our goal is to print out multiples of 17 below 300 but we're told that we need to use this value of n uh, over here or in other words we have to keep this line as it is so as you can imagine if the user enters thousand our loop will run for thousand times and we wouldn't be just printing out multiples of 17 below 300. We would also be printing out multiples of 17 above 300, right? So if I just put if i mod 17 is zero, print i, we can see that the output is, if I put 1000, we can see that it prints out all the multiples even above 300. But the question was to print multiples of 17 below 300. So what do we use? What do we do? So there's this excellent keyword called the break, which basically breaks a loop. Simple. It breaks out of a loop. So if we have this if statement, and if we have another if statement, if i is greater than 300, if i is greater than 300, we should break out of this loop. Simple. Now, if I run this, even if I put, let's say, this big number, you can see that it just prints out the multiples of 17 from 0, that is our starting point, till 289, right, which is the last multiple below 300. So this is the use of the break keyword. Now, it's very useful when you consider a user-driven program. So if you ask a user, would you like to continue? Yes. Would you like to continue? Yes. Imagine if you had this program while true and then you just print out you in fact get a string uh, n we call it k equals input do you want to continue so the program is we should continue as long as the user prints out yes 
So as long as the user prints out, yes, we should print out a number. Let's say i is 100. So if k is equal to yes, sorry, k is a yes, we'll print out i. Okay, simple. And I'll just put an i equals i plus 1 over here. Sorry, yeah. So now, as long as the user prints out yes, we will uh, print out i. Okay. Now, now what if the user does not print out a yes? If, if he does not uh, enter yes, so if, if let's say I do this, do you want to continue? Yes. So print out. Yes, 100 and 1. Yes, 102. If I print some random thing, it will not print out anything, but that meant if I say no, it will say do you want to continue? No. It will say do you, still do you want to continue? Now this is a while true, so we cannot put anything over here that will make this false. So the other way to stop this or kill this loop would be to use a break statement. So if I say if k is equal to no, then you can say break. Okay, so simple words. We run this, and if I say yes, it will print out 100. If I say yes, 101. If I say yes, 102. If I say no. It's broken out of the loop and break it just breaks out of the loop. If I have anything apart from this saying thanks for using our program, so then you can see that it prints out yes, 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 and no. You can see that it just breaks out of the loop, but the rest of the program, which in our case is just this one line, continues. I mean it it it, it still runs, right? It still runs this. Thank you for using our program is still printed out. So that's the use of the break statement. And I hope to see you guys in the next part. Bye-bye.